In April of 2022, Google retired the parameter management tool in Google Search Console. This was an effective tool to manage parameters on your website and make sure Google handled those parameters correctly when crawling and indexing your website. Without this tool, there aren't as many options to manage parameters on your website. So in this video, let's talk about what tools we have available to us to manage URL parameters. When it comes to managing parameters on your website, there's three main steps. First step is you need to find every parameter on your website. Second, you need to determine what to do with those parameters. And the third step is actually implementing the changes necessary to handle those parameters. So let's talk about each of those steps, starting with the first step of finding every parameter on your website. Now there's lots of different parameters that can end up being used on your website. Those parameters can come from your own content management system, from third party tools that you have added to your website, and can also come from various advertising platforms. Every advertising platform wants to attach some kind of tracking parameter to the URLs, so that way they can know how those advertisements were performing. In an ideal world, you could go to everybody in the marketing department who runs ads and every developer who manages your content management system or every third party vendor and ask them, what parameters are you using? And ideally, you could get a complete list of every parameter. In reality, nobody keeps track of all the parameters that are being used. Nobody can. There's too many different parameters that are out there, too many different parameter options available within all the different tools that you end up needing to use on your website and all the different advertisement platforms that exist. While you can start there and hopefully get a few parameters listed out, you need to go through and find parameters in other ways. And there's three primary tools we can use to help us with this. We can use analytics tools, we can look at our log files, and we can crawl through the site. The goal of each of these tools is to try and identify how many URLs on our website that currently exist are utilizing some kind of parameter. So we're looking for every URL that has a question mark in it. A question mark indicates the beginning of a query string, and the query string contains one or more parameters. So in an analytics tool, we can go in and look at all the pages that were visited and try and find every page that was visited that contained a question mark. Let's walk through how we can do this in Google Analytics, and in this case, I'll focus on GA4 for how we can find this. In GA4, we want to go to Reports, then click on Engagement, then click Pages and Screens. Once on the Pages and Screens report, we can change the dimension to Page, Path, and Query. Then we can search this report for any URL containing a question mark, and that will enable us to find URLs that are using parameters. You can then go to the share icon, click download file, then download a CSV to have a full list of URLs containing parameters. It's a similar idea in log files. You want to open up your log file for some period of time, and then you can query all the different URLs that received a hit in the log file for those that contain a query string. To take a quick example, here's how we could do this in HTTP log viewer. And then we can also find URLs that contain question marks within a site crawl. Whatever crawl tool you want to use, you can go through, crawl your entire website, get a complete list of all the URLs that were found through the crawler on your website, those that are linked to from somewhere on your website, and you can see which of those URLs that were linked to contain a question mark, contain the query string, and then from that query string we can find the parameters. Once you've exported all the lists from analytics tools, log files, crawl tools, the next step is to combine all those lists together and get a complete list of parameters contained within those URLs. And there's a few different options that you have available to extract parameters from all the URLs that you found. There are paid tools like SEO tools for Excel that give you a way to do this within Excel, but there's also free JavaScript libraries that allow you to extract parameters from URLs containing query strings. I also have a free tool on my website that allows you to extract URL parameters in bulk. Simply go to this tool, drop in the list of all the URLs containing parameters, click on Get Bulk Parameters, and this tool will return a full list of unique URL parameters that are used on the website, as well as a full list of all the parameters and parameter values. That's step one, going through and finding all the different parameters that exist on your website. By the end of this step, we should have a pretty complete list of all the different parameters that are utilized on our website across different sources. Analytics tools allow us to find all the ones that visitors are reaching, log files allow us to find all the parameters that bots might be hitting, and a crawl tool allows us to find all the parameters, used or not used, that are linked to from within our website. 
The next step is we need to go through every single one of those parameters and determine how to handle and manage that parameter. And there are a few key questions we need to ask about every single one of those parameters. The first question is, if the parameter meaningfully changes the page's content. And the key word here is meaningfully. A lot of different parameters can alter a website's content, at least slightly. What we want to know is if the parameter, when added to the URL, changes the content in a really substantial, meaningful way. Something that would be really remarkably different for a visitor from an SEO standpoint. So if this URL with this parameter happened to rank in search results and somebody clicked on that and came to our website, would they really understand the difference between the page with and without that parameter? Let's take a couple examples. One example is a sort parameter. A sort parameter obviously sorts the page in a different way. So we have a list of items and we say, okay, we want to sort this alphabetically versus reverse alphabetically. Is that really a meaningful difference? It does alter the page's content, but if I look at the page, it's the same list of items. So I wouldn't necessarily want to find that list of items in search results alphabetically and reverse alphabetically. One sort is sufficient to find in search results, so the sort parameter doesn't really add a meaningful difference. So in that case, that sort parameter, we're probably not going to want Google to pay attention to it. As another example though, think about a filter that you can add to that same list of items. Maybe I have an ability on a list of items to filter for items containing a certain value or matching certain criteria. All of a sudden that becomes a pretty meaningful difference. So if a URL contains a parameter with a filter in it that changes the list itself, that's probably something we would want to rank in search results, something we would want people to find. And when people find it, they would probably look at that and say, yeah, that's a real different list of items because it's a list of items filtered down in a particular way. So in that case, that filter parameter is probably something that we would want ranking in search results. So you need to do this for every single parameter that's utilized on your website and determine if that parameter really meaningfully changes your website's content or not. The second question to address is if URLs with that parameter applied should rank in search results. To a certain extent, this overlaps with the first question. If the parameter, when added to the URL, meaningfully changes a page's content, then of course that should rank in search results. It meaningfully changes the page's content. This is important for people to find. But what about all the other parameters that are left, the ones that don't meaningfully alter the page's content? Well, that's where this second question comes in. We need to go through every single one of those parameters and determine whether or not they should rank in search results. Or better said, whether or not it's a big deal if they end up in search results. A good example here is tracking parameters. It would be a pretty big problem if a URL with a tracking parameter applied ranked in search results. If your tracking parameters from your email campaign ended up ranking in search results, that'd mean anybody clicking on those URLs in search results would appear in your analytics tool as if they came from your email campaign. That's a big problem and really distorts your reporting. So you want to note those particular parameters and say, okay, those parameters, tracking parameters, should never rank in search results. And we want to be able to control those parameters really specifically to make sure they do not appear in search results. The final question that we need to address is if Googlebot should crawl URLs with this parameter applied. In general, you want to allow Google the ability to crawl most pages on your website. But there are certain parameters that when added to a URL can just create real big problems if Googlebot were to be crawling them. Take for example, any kind of faceted navigation parameters. Those when applied can sometimes meaningfully alter the page's content, but you can also end up with so many different filters applied that it creates essentially a crawl trap for Google where they end up crawling a whole lot of unnecessary URLs. In those cases, it can make sense to prevent Googlebot from crawling those particular parameters. Now that we've gone through and looked at every single one of the parameters that we've found and determined what we should and should not do with those parameters, the next and final step is to implement the controls necessary to manage those parameters. And to manage those parameters, we need to look at two things. We need to look at what we're doing with crawling and we need to look at what we're doing with indexing. And we really have three options available to us. The first option is to allow crawling and ranking. If a parameter, when added to a URL, meaningfully alters the page's content, then Googlebot should crawl that URL, they should index that URL, and they should rank that URL. But that isn't always the case. Sometimes we want to prevent URLs containing certain parameters from ranking. 
So if the parameter does not meaningfully alter the content and you want to make sure Google does not rank this page's URL, then we want to prevent the ranking. And there's two ways we can do this. We can either prevent ranking with a canonical or we can prevent ranking with a no index. A canonical, when added to the URL, tells Google that the URL with the parameter applied is really a version or a copy of another URL. So in some cases, you'll see websites that have URLs containing certain parameters canonical back to that same URL without those parameters added. And this is the appropriate tool to use when you have URL parameters that don't really alter the page's content at all, or not very much. Tracking parameters, sort parameters, things like that. The page itself really doesn't change. So the canonical is an appropriate way of communicating to Google that that parameter when added isn't something that really alters the page's content. And so Google should treat the URL that they found containing that parameter as a copy of the URL that does not contain that parameter. And in those cases, Google will see that canonical tag and say, oh, okay, great, we won't index or rank, or in some cases even crawl the URL containing that parameter. Instead, we'll just focus on the URL not containing that parameter. However, there are certain instances where Google starts to ignore canonical tags. So in those cases, you need something a bit stronger than a canonical tag. And that's where a noindex tag can be added to the page instead. So anytime the URL contains a particular parameter, you add a MetaRobots noindex tag, and that MetaRobots noindex tag, when added to the page, tells Google that they should not index this particular URL on the website. Another option we have to manage parameters is we can block Google from crawling those parameters altogether. And this is appropriate to do if there's a real problem with Googlebot crawling URLs containing that parameter. The easiest way to prevent Google from crawling URLs containing a certain parameter is with the robots.txt disallow. You can write a disallow command on your robots.txt file that tells Google to not crawl any URLs containing a specific parameter value. Now that does prevent crawling, but it's important to remember that when you disallow crawling, that doesn't have any effect whatsoever on indexing. So URLs that you've told Google not to crawl can still rank in search results. You haven't controlled indexing, you've only controlled crawling. And if those do show in search results, you'll see a result that looks something like this, that states the URL and says no information is available. And no information can be seen on this page because you've told Google not to crawl this particular URL. And if they can't crawl it, then they don't know whether or not they should index that page or not. Typically, you don't want to prevent crawling of URLs with specific parameters. You want to handle this with the noindex or canonical tags instead. But if you do need to prevent crawling and you end up with search results like this, you can use the removal tool in Google Search Console to remove certain URLs containing specific parameters from search results. I have a separate video all about how to use that removal tool, so check that out if that's something you need to do. If you have any questions about working with parameters, finding parameters on your website, determining what to do with parameters, let me know. You can email me at matthew at elementive.com. If you found this video helpful and want to see more like it from Elementive, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.